Hello and welcome to this video for CE 108 Mechanics of Deformable Solids. So in the previous video we started chapter 3 and we are still in chapter 3. Uh, in the previous video we introduced the concept of strain and then we looked at what is the relationship between the stress and the strain. And this is what we saw as the stress-stress diagram, the stress-strain diagram, which is different for brittle and ductile solids. So now we are going to specifically focus more on the initial regime, the first regime of the stress strain diagram, which is the linear elastic regime, which is the regime that we will be focusing on for most of this class. So now we're going to look at within this regime, uh, what is the more mathematical nature of the relationship between the deformation and the stress, so between the stress and the strain within the material. So the relationship between the stress and the strain within the material and within the linear elastic regime is known as the hook slope. And so the, the principle behind this relationship, so this is not this hook slope, is something that is observed it's not something that is proven or can be uh, uh, can be uh, established based on some uh, more fundamental principle this is more a phenomenological observation is and this observation is that in the the linear elastic regime so in this uh, linear elastic regime with that is observed uh, by uh, materials for small deformation when the stress is increasing linearly with the strain then in this regime what the Hooke's law tells you is that the stress is proportional to the strain so the stress sigma is proportional to the strain epsilon and this is the the, the observation that is at the base of the Hooke's law so in this case, the, the Hooke's law can be um, uh, written as follows. So this is the, the Hooke's law. And uh, the, what it's telling us is that the stress is proportional to the strain. So you can write that stress is proportional to strain. And we need to define a proportionality constant. And this proportionality constant, in this case, is going to be the Young's modulus, where the Young's modulus is going to be the proportionality constant that relates the strain, the normal strain, here we're talking about normal deformation, the normal strain to the normal stress. So in this case, to summarize, so sigma, this is the normal stress experienced by the material, its unit is in uh, Pascal or in um, uh, Newton per square meter. Then you have the strain uh, epsilon. This is the normal strain. So in this case, the relative deformation, the elongation divided by the initial length and the unit of the strain. There is no unit. It's meter divided by meter. And now, so we have defined a new quantity, which is the Young's modulus the young's modulus being the proportionality constant that relates the strain to the stress and in this case since the um, the the strain does not have any unit then necessarily the young's modulus has the same unit as the stress so the young's modulus will also have uh, a unit in pascal or in uh, newton uh, per square meter so in this case the Young's modulus E characterizes the stiffness of the material. It means that if for a given uh, strain, so let's assume that you apply a given strain, uh, if the Young's modulus is high, uh, then you will have, you will need a very large stress. And if the Young's modulus is low, then you will, you will need a low stress. So it means that to achieve the same deformation, to, uh, to achieve a, a strain, a given strain, you will need a very large stress if the material is very stiff, if it has a high Young's modulus, and you will need a very low stress if the material is very soft, if it has a low Young's modulus. Another way 
of expressing that is that for an, a, a given stress now if you fix the stress if you fix the stress and um, depending on the the young's modulus that you have then the strain is going to be equal to sigma divided by e that is to say that for a given stress if you have a material with a high young's modulus then the strain will be given by sigma divided by e and in that case it means that epsilon equals sigma divided by e epsilon will be very small is that mean to say that if the young's modulus is very high if the material is very stiff for a given stress the material will only exhibit a small deformation and on the other hand if the the material has a low young's modulus then sigma equal sig uh, epsilon equals sigma divided by e will be very large because you are dividing by a small number so it means that if the mater if the material is very stiff with a high young's modulus then for a given stress the deformation will be very small the, de the material will be very resistant to elastic deformation and on the other hand if the young's modulus is very low then the material is very soft it's not very resistant to elastic deformation it will tend to show large deformation for a given stress it's useful um, in that regard to have some ideas about what are the typical orders of magnitude so the typical values of the the young's modulus for different types of materials just to have some ideas about what we're talking about so in that sense uh for example if you take steel steel is a fairly stiff material so the young's modulus of steel would be on the order of 200 gigapascal which means that mat uh, material like steel is very stiff uh, which means that for a given stress still will have a very very small elastic deformation now let's take um, another type of material like for example concrete so if you look at the Young's modulus of concrete its Young's modulus would be on the order of 20 gigapascal which means that concrete is about 10 times less stiff than steel still it's a fairly stiff material uh, other example, if you take um, a typical piece of glass, for example, a typical piece of glass, uh, that depends on the type of glass, but typically, at least for window glass, the Young's modulus would be on the order of 100 gigapascal. So in this case, glass would have a stiffness that is in between that of steel and that of concrete. And finally, maybe an example of a softer material. So if you take uh, rubber, the, the Young's modulus of a piece of rubber, which is a much softer or less stiff material than the, the steel, concrete or glass, then the Young's modulus of rubber is on the order of 10 megapascal. So a much lower stiffness as compared to uh, that of concrete glass, for example, about uh, 2,000 um, times lower than the Young's modulus of concrete. So uh, soft, the rubber is an example of a fairly soft material or a, not, a material that is not stiff. So which means that this material will have a low Young's modulus. So for a given stress, the material will tend to elongate a lot because again, the deformation is the stress divided by the Young's modulus. So if the Young's modulus is very low, then the deformation will be very high in terms of the sign uh, convention for this so we saw that um, for a material that is uh, under tension then the stress is positive and the the strain is positive while for a material that is under compression then the stress is negative and the strain is negative so a material under tension will have a positive stress and will tend to elongate so that the strain is negative while for a material under compression the stress will be negative and these materials will tend to shrink which means that the strain will be negative so in this case, uh, that's uh, the positive and the negative convention. So if you look at the sine of sigma, the sine of sigma is always the sine of epsilon. So, and there might be some very rare ex exceptions of uh, metamaterials that behave in a fairly weird way where the, um, 
you apply a compressive load and the material will actually elongate. But in most of the cases, if you apply a compression, the materials shrink. If you apply a tension, the materials elongate. That's what happens 99% of the time, which means that the sign of the normal stress is the same as the sign of the normal strain. The sign of sigma is the same as the sign of epsilon. And if the sign of sigma is the same as the sign of epsilon, then it means that the Young's modulus is always positive. The Young's modulus is always a positive quantity, which means that the sign of sigma will be the same as the sign of epsilon. So the Young's modulus is always a positive quantity for, let's say, 99% of the material that you will be dealing with. So, so far you, we have been talking of, of the case of an actual load where you apply an actual normal deformation and you measure the corresponding normal stress. And in that case, the Hooke's law gives you the Young's modulus of the material. Uh, then there's a second case, which is the case of shear deformation. So in this case, you take a given material and you apply a given uh, shear strain and you measure what is the corresponding shear stress that you get within this material. So in that case, you can also draw a, a stress strain diagram in the similar fashion as we looked at the stress strain diagram in the case of a normal deformation. But in this case now, the, the difference is that this stress strain diagram is uh, the diagram that shows during the shear of a material the evolution of the shear stress tau as a function of the shear strain gamma. And in that case, in most of the cases, this, shear, this uh, stress strain diagram under shear is uh, pretty similar to uh, a brittle material in the sense that initially when there is no stress there is no shear, um, there is no strain for when there is no stress, or when the strain is zero, the stress is also going to be zero. Then you will have an elastic regime where the stress is increasing linearly with the strain until the point that you reach uh, a yield point uh, that we're going to write to y. And then in certain cases, uh, if, the, um, if there is any kind of ductility, then you can also have a small uh, uh, regime like this, a small uh, yielding regime where um, the, the stress would continue to increase. But now you would start to see some non-reversible, some non-elastic deformation until you reach the fracture point. So at this point, you have reached the uh, fracture point. This is the point at which the, the material breaks. And uh, in this case, this quantity here would be the maximum uh, shear stress that you can apply before the fracture of the material. So this is what we previously called to ultimate, the maximum shear stress that the material can undergo. So in this case, what we are going to be focusing on is this linear elastic regime which in the same case as what we saw for the normal deformation, this is the regime where the shear stress is going to be proportional to the shear strain. This is when the, the, the deformation is reversible. So that is the linear elastic regime. So in this case, similarly, uh, the observation is that in the linear elastic regime, the, the deformation is proportional to the stress. So in this case, in the linear elastic regime, the, what the Hooke's law tells us is that the shear stress tau is proportional to the shear strain gamma in the same way that sigma is proportional to epsilon during uh, a normal deformation. Now tau is proportional to gamma, which is a general consequence of something that is very common in nature, which is very often the consequence is proportional to the cause in many cases. So in this case, the cause is the deformation, uh, the cause is the stress and the, the, the consequence is the deformation. You apply a given stress and in result, you have a given deformation. So same thing, you can summarize this as the, the Hooke's law where the Hooke's law tells you that the shear stress is proportional to the shear strain, tau is proportional to gamma, 
similar, similarly you need to define a proportionality constant and in this case the proportionality constant in the same way that in the case of the normal deformation the proportionality constant was the Young's modulus now the proportionality constant is G and that is going to be in this case the shear modulus so the shear modulus is defined by this Hooke's law and it's the proportionality constant that relates the shear stress to the shear strain so to summarize all of this so um, we have tau which is the shear stress in terms of the unit tau is a stress so it's in, in unit is pascal or newton per square meter then we have gamma which is the shear strain uh, in terms of unit gamma doesn't have any unit it's a meter divided by meter no unit and now we have defined the shear modulus which relates the shear stress to the shear strain and since the shear strain does not have any unit then the shear modulus has the same the same unit as the shear stress so it's also going to be in pascal so same thing let's see some uh, typical values just like what we saw for the young's modulus so typical values for different types of material uh, so let's start with steel again so steel again for the shear modulus would be about 80 gigapascal so that's an example of a stiff material it's very much the same as the Young's modulus here if G is very large then it means that you have a very stiff material which means that uh, the, for a given stress you will have a very low strain other example uh, concrete the, the the shear modulus of concrete would be on the order of 8 gigapascal glass a typical window glass would have a, a shear modulus of about 40 gigapascal and again let's take the example of uh, rubber a much softer material which would have a much lower um, Young's modulus that is about 1000 times lower that of glass so about 4 megapascal in terms of the sign convention we will be again using the same si si types of type uh, the same types of sign convention as we previously defined both for the shear stress and the shear strain so again if you have a shear stress that is positive like this where you have a deformation of the system like this this is what we would call a positive shear stress and a positive shear strain and on the other hand if you have something uh, like this which is the opposite then the material would be deformed like this that would be the case of a negative shear stress and a negative shear strain this is about the sign convention that we are using and in this case you see that the sign of tau is always the sign of gamma if tau is negative then gamma is negative if tau is positive then tau uh, then gamma is also positive which means that the sign of those two quantities the shear stress and the shear strain are always the same and in this case it means that necessarily the shear modulus g is always a positive quantity the shear modulus is always a positive quantity so that the sign of tau is the same as the sign of gamma so that's something that is always true so now uh, what we are going to see uh, after this uh, this in the next section is we are going to talk about another types of material properties so far we have seen two types of material property the young's modulus which characterize how stiff the material is when subjected to a normal stress now we have seen the shear modulus how stiff the material is when subjected to a shear deformation how resistant to a shear deformation the material is and in the next section we are going to talk about the Poisson's ratio which is another types of mechanical property of a given material which characterize uh, the response of a given material the elastic response of a given material